Thanks, everyone, and thank you very much for that. Um, welcome, Michael. I'm really happy to be here today and, and to all the Huri team as well. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land and some of you who are not from the ACT and those of you who are from the ACT will know that we had our first Reconciliation Day public holiday yesterday um, and it was a great event for people to come along to from um, all parts of the ACT and the region to celebrate reconciliation, what we've done but all of the things that we still need to do to support Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in our community. So I want to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future, and acknowledge their significant contribution that they make to the life of this city and this region. Uh, I see you've all had a very hot lunch. It smells delightful. Um, so I'll try to keep it interesting so that it's not too long and you don't suddenly doze off on me. Uh, by definition, Ahuri's work lends itself to technical, technical discussions about housing policy. It's an extremely valuable body for us policymakers, a great source of evidence and a regular reference point for the ACT government as we, as we finalise a new housing strategy later this year. By the same token, this field of work is heavily influenced by the values of governments and decision makers. Housing policy is a contested area, and I have some different beliefs to some of the people who have been presenting today. I believe in more public housing, not less. I believe that where market fails to provide for people on low incomes or face disadvantage, it's on those of us who are more fortunate to intervene. And this has been the ACT government's belief for many years. But I know full well the limits of what values and beliefs alone can achieve. Over more than a decade, the ACT government has pulled the policy levers that we have to respond to homelessness and maximise housing affordability. We've maintained by some margin the highest ratio of public housing in the country, a tax reform, reform program placing, replacing stamp duty with a broad-based land tax has moderated house price growth and helped avoid the mayhem of Sydney and Melbourne. And we've invested heavily in specialist homelessness services to do their amazing work with people experiencing or at risk of homelessness. On the last point, the recent census data showed the ACT bucking a national trend to reduce our homelessness numbers by 8.2%. And I take my hat off to the people who do this work. Our simple goal is to continue this trend and to improve affordability for people in different housing types, whether they are renting or buying. But you have to be smart and we know our limits. In any jurisdiction, particularly a small one like Canberra, the community's housing experience is subject to things that are beyond our control. Federal tax and immigration policies, income trends, borrowing and lending practices, and investment from elsewhere. So there's no point burning up every resource we have to swim a little bit longer against the tide. That's why in shaping our new housing strategy for the ACT, the government is evaluating a ten, our 10 years experience of the previous strategy and bringing together the learnings from a year long consultation process to get the mix right. Not of course that I will stop banging on about the need for federal tax reform to lessen the incentives on investors squeezing out home buyers any soon. I'll continue to make that call. Those of you in our local housing and homelessness sectors might know that a new housing strategy was a commitment made by ACT Labor at the 2016 election. At that time, I had been minister for nearly two years and there was clearly a view in the community to take stock and renew our efforts on homelessness and affordability. So I've set out in this process to explore the many things which affect outcomes in housing and created a framework to address them giving people choice wherever they are on the housing spectrum and trying to help broaden their horizons. One thing you get reminded of every time you look at this policy area is how much sits beyond the housing portfolio. Tax settings under the Treasurer, rental law under the Attorney General, one of the biggest factors for stable and affordable renting, and built form under the Minister for Planning. Some of you might also know about the Affordable Housing Action Plan, a policy which has served the ACT well over the last 10 years. 
This plan achieved success through acceleration of land release, the introduction of land tax, tax reforms, the provision of sites for public and community housing, and the provision of homelessness support services. But there are still significant pressures on lower, for the lower 40% of income earners, where Canberra's higher than average wages can hide and exacerbate the disadvantage that they experience. A new housing strategy will work to bridge those gaps. It will focus on some key goals. Further reducing homelessness, strengthening social housing assistance, increasing affordable rental housing, and increasing affordable home ownership. The road to the strategy has been one of the largest community conversations that we've seen in the ACT. Working with an affordable housing advisory group, there were 26 different community workshops involving more than 125 organisations and over 340 individuals. This led to the Housing and Homelessness Summit in October last year and brought together a wide range of industry, community and government representatives, as well as people with lived experience of homelessness. And although I'm copying some flack for not having put out a glossy strategy document yet, in many ways the strategy has begun and we have some early initiatives that are already up and running. The ACT government now sets annual targets of dedicated affordable public and community housing to be released from both our infill and greenfield land release program. Including housing targets as part of the land release program provides clarity on how dwellings will be delivered in which areas as well as providing certainty for developers as well and for the broader community as well. This requirement is now legislated and I hope that the ACT governments long and into the future will hold themselves to account in this way. In broader terms, the ACT government continues to release residential land to meet or exceed projected population demand. And in unit supply, we've seen some pretty good results. Prices have been stable for a decade now and in some cases are now within affordable purchase price thresholds. Under the previous Affordable Housing Action Plan, the government had a policy of delivering 20% affordable housing in greenfield areas. While this was effective, it could mean affordable housing was pushed towards the outer urban edge. The new targets are improving the spread and diversity of affordable housing by ensuring that it is embedded in the renewal of existing suburbs as well in the development of new ones. We have some fine minds advising on these targets and I know that you heard from some of our directed officials earlier this morning. Each year's numbers have been geared to the capacity of the housing sector to deliver, not the least in public and community housing and our hope is to see growth on both fronts. At the same time, the government has strengthened the settings around dedicated affordable homes to make sure houses are purchased by people who need them most. This has been done through the creation of an affordable home purchase database. When we ask the Canberra community to contribute to better housing outcomes by subsidising the sale of their public land, I take my responsibility very seriously in making sure that there is no profiteering and that the right people benefit. The other new initiative already up and running is a $1 million innovation fund to support new ways of unlocking more affordable housing getting more out of housing design and the way that we use the stock that we have. The first year of funding focuses on bringing innovative housing projects seen across the country to the ACT. These include affordable rental real estate models similar to home ground, a sharing model similar to home share and a low profit development model like Nightingale Housing. I'm hopeful that the first year's projects will make a measurable difference to providing more affordable housing options for the community and that they show themselves to be viable for the longer term. Before I wrap up, I want to come full circle and assure everyone that public housing and well-supported specialist homelessness services sector will always be at the heart of my priorities as Minister. Some people in our community fall into the trap of assuming things about people who are homeless or poor. They're offended by somebody sleeping in a public in a public place. Some of my political opponents are offended by the idea of public housing in their own neighbourhoods. Luckily, our homelessness services don't judge, nor do the amazing people at Housing ACT and in our community housing providers. A great majority of the community doesn't judge, and neither do I. 
Anyone who's chatted to these people knows that each one has their own story. They are their own unique person, just like each of us. Usually a couple of life events have tipped them into homelessness and then things can snowball from there. Helping these people find their way back into housing and at a fair crack of happiness is what will drive our government to keep investing in public housing. We're in the home straight now of a major renewal program replacing 11% of public housing stock. The ACT government maintains the highest proportion of public and community housing in Australia with around 27 dwellings per 1,000 people against a national average of 17. And next week's ACT budget will invest further in these initiatives to build on this incredibly important public asset. The government keeps doing these things because of a value set which says that these are the right things to do. But as I said, it's contested ground. We often have to fight for them. So I'd urge you all to keep being champions in your own communities for housing policies and interventions that respond to people's better instincts and give everyone the chances at life that they deserve. For any of us who have lived in social housing and enjoyed the security that comes with a roof over your head, we know just how important public housing can be to a more equal society. One of the other statistics of note about public housing in the ACT is that housing is targeted incredibly accurately to the people who need it most. Last year, more than 98% of all new allocations were made to households in greatest need compared to 74% nationally. This is seen as efficient, but the truth is I'd love nothing more than to see this number go down because it would mean either less people in urgent need of housing or that our social housing stock had grown enough to return housing people with less acute needs. There are so many factors which affect someone's housing experience, plenty of them beyond anyone in this room's control. I very much hope that between all of us, we can make sure that there is a chance for everyone to get a stable home and a chance of health and happiness which flows on from that. Thanks again for having me along. The Minister has, has agreed to take one or two questions from the floor. Down the front here, please. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Gavin from Lancome, New South Wales. I just wanted to ask a question about the broad-based land tax. Mm -hmm. Is there any evidence yet, because uh, I think you're about three years into the 10-year plan, mm -hmm. Um, for the transfer. Is there any evidence that I think you said it has moderated house prices? And I was also curious, is there any evidence net yet that it's going to result in a loss of income to the territory? And thirdly, whether you think it's affecting people's choice, especially people would like to downsize and stamp duty is a massive disincentive sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's still, I think it's still very, very early days. It's a 20-year um, program of uh, tax reform, um, but there, you will see change over, over the years because they're both going to balance out and become neutral. So there won't be a change to the income in the ACT government and the cost won't uh, increase over the 20 years for a person making a choice to get into a home of their own. But it'll take a little bit of time for that to really that flow to actually make a difference to somebody who wants to purchase a home of their own at the moment because we're still at the very start of it. Well, um, property prices have gone up because in the ACT we have a, 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 a more people on higher incomes than on lower incomes and unfortunately that means that the cost of buying a home gets pushed up because people can afford to pay more. And so these are the people down the bottom are the ones that are really missing out now because of the higher income earners being able to um, pay more for their homes. That's something, of course, that's very difficult and, you know, people would go, the heads would start spinning if we started interfering in that market. Um, but we can target housing to, for more affordable housing to people who need it in different kinds of ways without interfering in the market. We could possibly squeeze in just one more quick question. We have, a, we have a, 
a quiet room, that's right. We've just had, we've just had lunch. We've just had lunch, that's right. Would you please join me in thanking Minister Berry? Thank you very much.